Welcome to Back to the Basics. Guys, I don't care what stage of fishing you are, whether you're beginner or you are advanced, you need to have baits that you can rely on. You need to have that foundation that you can rely on to catch fish anywhere in the country, any time of the season. And that's what we're going to talk about today on live is five baits that you can fish anywhere, anywhere in the country at any time of the season, you're going to be able to use one of these baits to catch fish. That's that helps you have confidence in exploring and tinkering with other baits to have even more success guys. It's all about the fundamentals, which was the inspiration for our back to the basics box that you existing subscribers uh, already received a few months ago, uh, which was very well received. That's what we're going to be going through today. So pull out your boxes. You can follow along. But for you guys that are on the fence, have been thinking about getting Lucky Tackle Box. The good news is while supplies last, if you sign up for Lucky Tackle Box, this is the box you're going to get the back to the basics box. And uh, we're going to have Kate, one of our Lucky Tackle Box team members, come on a little bit later uh, and with an offer on uh, if you guys sign up a little extra something as well to motivate you guys. I think I think you're going to really like it. She's still trying to figure out if that's possible. So we're going to get her on at the end of the feed. But if you guys when we're talking about basics, what, what does that mean, Travis? I, you know, I live in the north. Some people live down in you know Florida. I'm out in California. Look, where does this mean the basics? And when I'm talking about basics, guys, you need to divide up the water column into top, mid, and bottom. And you need to have baits that you can fish on not only all three of those depths, but then you need to have baits that you can fish horizontally. You can cast and reel them in, but you can also have baits that you can fish vertically that'll fall naturally in front of some kind of structure or, you know, like docks or things like that. These bass are hiding under. So that's where we put these baits together so you can cover all those water columns and all those different situations so that you can always catch bass no matter where you are so this is this is why this is our first number one starter box for anybody subscribing right now because this is the box to get you going also we're going to be going live so if, if you guys enjoyed this video or when you've enjoyed this video we're going to be going live on saturday i'm going to be out on the water using this box and going through these different baits so if you guys have questions suggestions send them in and we will make sure to uh to answer those when we're out there the live on the water if you didn't watch there was 10,000 people that uh, followed along last weekend. We're going to be doing it again. We're going to do it every weekend. Couldn't be more excited about bringing this to you guys. So for you existing subscribers, I have a little sneak peek. What's coming up next month for you guys is our post spawn fishing. Um, these fish, they move up shallow right now during the spawn. They do their thing, but then eventually they're going to move back out through that same migration routes they used um, to come in from their winter time to spawn. But this time they're going to kind of spread out. They're going to sprinkle out. They're not all ending up in deep water. They're going to, some are going to stay shallow. Some are going to be in these transition areas and some are going to be all the way deep. So you once again need baits that you can fish for these different uh, areas, but also these fish are a little bit more finicky. They don't feed, they feed in smaller windows. And that's what these post spawn baits are going to be designed for to help you target bass that time of the year. Uh, it's all part of our Lucky Tackle Box experience where we deliver now themed boxes that have not only the baits, but where you guys are going to see the terminal tackle as well, the hooks, weights, line, and any other accessories that you need to be able to go out and catch fish immediately. So that's enough with the hype. Let's break into this box and start breaking down some techniques, starting with the Gambler Baits, the Ace. This is a little stick bait. Um, as if you don't have this uh, in your fishing arsenal, yeah, you're crazy. You have to have a stick bait, especially in the green pumpkin. This is uh, one of the most common colors there is in any kind of soft plastic. And the way we've got it rigged first, and we included all these uh, tools in your box, uh, in the bas Back to Basics box. But this is called a Nico rig or a nail weight rig. You've got a nail in the head, which you can't see right here. And it's stuck in that head. Then you've got a little O-ring and you slide your wacky hook right underneath the O-ring. And what this bait is going to look like underwater is it's going to fall nose down and you are going to be shaking your slack line. Um, you have semi slack line as you're reeling that you're shaking that bait and that bait is going to hop nose down uh, underwater. Uh, and it's going to be just hopping, looking like a little bait searching for uh, some kind of uh, food or, or it's kind of just searching around between those rocks, but it looks vulnerable. A bass sees that and goes, oh, something's rummaging around between those little crevices and stuff. And it's not looking up for any kind of, uh, you know, prey. And that is 
irresistible to a bass. So a great little technique to throw across points, to, to throw across a little shallow flats and things like that. And, uh, and it's, you can spice it up a little bit by adding a little chartreuse tip to that tail to highlight that tail a little bit. But when you look at this bait underwater, you see just a natural looking bait, it, so much action and uh, such an effective tool, especially when fish aren't biting, uh, you know, when they're not hitting reaction baits and stuff, this is the bait to go to. Now, stick bait is so so effective because of how versatile it is. You can rig it so many different ways. And the next way I want to show you how to rig it is what we call wacky rig. That looks like almost like a cartoon that you go straight through the middle and in, where before it was in line with the bait, this is perpendicular to the bait. So that hook sits perpendicular to it. And if you look on these little mustad uh, split rings that we supplied, you will see a tiny little, um, uh, hole to put your hook through. And that's for this wacky rig. You don't do it when you're uh, nail weighted. You only do it when you're wacky rigged like this. And the other option is you can put a weight in the middle right here. If you want that bait to fall a little faster, the reason you'd want that bait to fall a little faster is if you're fishing in some wind, or if you are, uh, you know, fishing a little bit deeper water and you need that bait to fall a little faster. So when you're fishing wacky rig, what it looks like underwater is you now have double the action, both little tails are uh, f wiggling on the way down as this thing falls. Now we showed the nail weight, you know, fish kind of open water along the bottom. This is perfect for fishing around structure where those bass are tucked up underneath the wood. They're hanging out underneath there and you can't necessarily throw to them. You can throw this little wacky rig to the edge and look at the action that thing has. These little tails are wiggling on down and it's like they're taunting the bass. They're like, oh, don't touch me, don't touch me. And they scurry on down and the bass find it irresistible. They sit underneath there and this nice slow little fall will get that bass to come out and hammer it. So if you have any kind of little tule edges, if you've got tree edges, uh, any kind, kind of type of cover that you have, you pitch this little thing along there and those bass will come out. One little tip when you're fishing structure like this, you want to fish the shady side. Now, uh, so if the sun is behind the structure that you're fishing, that's going to cast the shade towards you. That's where you want to be fishing it. If the sun is at your back, that means the shade is going to be uh, more towards the other side of that structure. And those fish are going to be towards it as well. So as you look through here, you got the great little, uh, you know, overhanging trees. You've got those tulies. This is perfect terrain for you to pitch up along there for those giant bass sitting up underneath there. All right. So moving to the next bait you're going to need for versatile lures. And if you guys are already guessing, you're like, dude, you, well, okay, a stick bait maybe, but you're also going to need some kind of creature bait, a hog style bait. We got you covered right here. This is the Matrix Shad Matrix Hog. Um, You've got the little flange to it. This is, I mean, this is a staple in bass fishing. Uh, any beginner fisherman is going to start throwing this, but I promise you guys, you're going to be throwing this for the rest of your fishing career because it always catches fish. Now, the tools that we supplied from Mustad in your box are um, the worm hook and a little tungsten bullet weight. And that is to rig this thing up Texas rig, which is uh, kind of one of the most basic rigs there are. And the reason uh, it's fantastic is because how easy it works. It's weedless, and uh, which means that hook is buried in that bait. And also there is a little weight. And we also included a little bead. The reason for the bead is if you're, you can put that little bead in there if you're fishing a little dingier water. So, uh, when you fish, or you fish water where they can't see as well. When you put that, uh, when that weight clicks against that bead, when you're shaking the bait, it clicks and makes a little bit of noise and it can help the fish try kind of hone in or locate this little bait a little bit more effectively. Um, but uh, guys, this can also be rigged like we just saw, like I just showed you how to rig the nail weight uh, rig as well. You can put that little split ring, you can put the little nail weight in there and fish it just the same as your nail or Nico rigged uh, stick bait also. So very, uh, very versatile bait as well. I'm really looking forward to throwing both these lures uh, on Saturday morning. I think I'm going to catch quite a few fish on this. Um, possibly, uh, uh, you know, we'll see which one I catch more fish on this creature or the little stick bait. But also, guys, we are live, so I'm going to be taking questions. So as you guys comment them in, whether it's on Facebook or YouTube, I've got Rachel, uh, one of our other Lucky Tackle Box team members, that's going to be relaying any comments. So I encourage you guys. Uh, I'm trying to go through this nice and fast, but efficiently. If you have any questions, write them down, and we'll make sure to answer those. 
Now, sure, let's hear some questions. Um, Joseph Angler uh, on YouTube, have I used the uh, the Strike King Rage Tail baits um, or the Berkeley? Which ones are the Berkeley ones? The Chunks? Chunk Trailer. I have not used the Berkeley, but the Strike King are also one of my favorite baits uh, on the market. I uh, The designer, uh, Steve Parks, is one of my close friends. And the reason him and I get along so well is, is that we both just obsess over bass fishing we can't get enough of it i've gone to mexico with them a couple of times we've actually had a quite a few fishing trips together which we are going to be talking on one of our live shows uh in the next coming weeks their baits are are fantastic because they put so much time into them they put them in the uh the little shells so that they the clam shells so that they all run right and uh, i would definitely highly recommend using any kind of rage tail products we've got another question rage Jonathan, you live on the Cumberland River? I, okay, okay, here's what you need to do. Guys, it's all about taking in the information that you have available. If you want to become a better fisherman, find ways to learn more. Uh, I am the host of FLW Live, which is a tournament coverage of the FLW Pro Circuit. Um, they fish the Cumberland River every few years. And there is tons of live coverage of guys out there fishing. And they, and you get to see the lures they're using. You get to see where they're fishing. There's no better way to learn about your local water than to watch the different tournaments that have live coverage that have come to your lake. And Cumberland, that is, if you haven't watched, also BASS goes there as well. If, uh, if you haven't watched the Elite Series footage, if you haven't watched FLW footage, um, I'm sure major league fishing will be going there as well. If you haven't watched those, then you're not doing what you need to be doing to learn more about that stuff. Cause they're going to break it down and you're going to get to see what the, what the pros do at the highest level. All right, let's keep moving along. We're going to take some more comments here uh, in just a second. Um, but now I showed you guys these different baits. I only sh showed you two baits, but I've now shown you many, many different ways to rig these baits. So, and that's where having the right terminal tackle comes on board. And Mustad has been excited to join up and partner with us this year uh, in a very extensive way because they are supplying us with these special little kits that we request that are specially made uh, to help go with our boxes, our themed boxes. So as you're seeing right now in the video, uh, one of the things we put in there is a little swivel. Now this little swivel chick I learned from the legend himself, Roland Martin. And this is a great way to save your stick baits. You can see right there that it, um, you want to thread it onto your line first, and then you thread the other end onto your hook. You rig up your hook, Texas rig, and what you end up with is that little swivel that can hold your bait your plastic on there better. So you're not going to lose as many plastics. Um, and if you guys have used a lot of, if you've used stick baits a lot, you understand how many baits you go through in a day. They're very effective, but you do go through a lot. Having this little swivel trick is a great way to, um, uh, to use less baits in a day. And then also that's rigged up with that little four aught um, worm hook that we also included in there that you can use either on the little uh, hog bait or on the stick bait. Now, another thing we threw in there, which we're calling these uh, Lucky Tackle Box, uh, the LTB Extras, are this little, one of, the, one of the items was this red skirt. This is normally used to replace a, a jig skirt or spinnerbait skirt, but the reason we put it in was you can pull these threads out and you can actually then use another hook and you can thread them through the tail of uh, this little stick bait, or you can even put them through the main body on your little uh, hog bait here. And it gives that a little bit more action. If you look, look at that little tail. You're putting a little red fish, especially this time of the year. We're in spring. Fish love red. That's That just gets, especially the bigger fish, those bigger females, they want to eat red. You throw in a little, a little flange red on the end of that tail. Oh, man, you are, you are taunting the fish to another level. This will give you a little bit more confidence when you're out there. Uh, and it'll also be a little trick. Your buddies will be like, hey, what, what are you doing? Let me see that bait. And, and you're because so many people use a stick bait, this makes yours stand out just a little bit more. You can go behind guys that are fishing in a crowded lake and you can catch some of those fish that they are missing. So really cool. I'm really liking the Mustad partnership that we've got going. And you're going to see them in pretty much every box with, uh, with their extras they're throwing in there. Now, let's go to some hard baits here. 
starting uh, with a good friend of mine, Gary Dobbins, the Dobbins D-Blade Beast. Um, he prides himself in this being the uh, the best quality spinnerbait on the market. He uh, went through tons of different products, tons of different product testing, and came up with a fantastic spinnerbait here. We made sure that uh, this was the most uh, versatile color and blade combinations. We've got the little gold blade. We've got the silver blade. We've got a shad pattern with a little chartreuse skirts. Now you've got a little bit of everything in here to fish the majority. This this is going to be the color you're going to use the majority of the time. There's going to be times of the year you want to use more of a shad color. There's going to be times of the year you want to use more of a darker watercolor. This is the ultimate hybrid of all of those so that you can really be versatile with this. Now, when a spinnerbait is underwater, um, it's it's throwing off reflections, it's throwing off vibrations, and it's looking like a little school of bait fish under the water. All that little reflecting and stuff looks like bait fish scattering along, and it uh, really catches the fish's attention. But uh, then that skirt gives them a target to go into. So they see that flash, they come in, but they actually hit that main body where the hook is because that's the, the flash is hard to even see. They'll go in and they'll hit that body that they can see uh, easily. Now we've talked about fishing the different water uh, columns. This is a bait that you can fish multiple water columns. If you slowly retrieve it, you can bounce it along the bottom. You can really fish deeper with it. Um, if you speed up that retrieve, you can fish mid depths. And then if you speed it up a lot, you can go just below the surface. It can be just a subsurface where fish are seeing it come over the grass and stuff and they'll come up and, and hit it. So really a, a bait that you can speed up, slow down to fish the different conditions. You don't have to switch baits. You can just switch the retrieves and get what you want out of it. Next bait is the live target popping frog. Um, guys, you can't have basic baits without having a top water. There are times when the top water is so effective is uh, the reason being is fish prefer to trap stuff on the top. When, when, if, if they chase something in open water, the, uh, the little bait fish, whatever they're ch chasing has an, an infinite amount of ways to retreat. Okay. So you, so a bass wants to turn the table and give themselves a better chance of catching that little bait fish. So if they can do it in shallow water, there's less water for the bait fish to get away. But if they can do it, um, on the surface, they have a, a lot of advantages. They've taken away half of the places that that little prey can escape. But also when they're coming up, they would always prefer to uh, strike up because whatever bait fish, all, everything looks up. They can't look below themselves. So they are very vulnerable when something is coming uh, below them. So a topwater bait can be extremely effective because it's something the bass know is the easiest kind of target. Now, a little popping bait like this, uh, first of all, with live target, they've got very realistic looking bait. So I really like live target in general. They've got the little feather to, to really uh, give it a little bit more action, disguise that hook a little bit. But then that popping um, little lip, that cup lip on the front, you give this bait little pop. So pop. And so uh, as you cast this thing out, you're going to throw it over, uh, you know, over grass that's just below the surface, around little structure, around brush that's below the surface or, or out in front of brush. And you can pop this little bait, pop, pop. And it sounds like something splashing on the surface, some little critter or something like that. But then you can pause it. And that, so as you pop, that fish will come out a little bit. You pop it again, that fish will come up a little bit more. And then when it sees its opportunity, it'll strike it. Where a lot of baits, you have to move fast and... Now, like a buzz bait, you have to keep moving for it to stay on the surface. Now, that buzz baits are extremely effective certain uh, times uh, in certain situations, but a popping style bait, you can work kind of fast, pop, 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 pop. Or if the bait, if, if the, you know, if the conditions call for it, you might have to just give it a little pop, pop, pause, pop, pop, pause, or big pops, pop, pop, pause, pop, pop, pause. And that'll actually get fish to come up from a little bit deeper water. So, once again, uh, as, as far as top water goes, a very versatile style little bait. And that's why it made it to our back to the basics box. Now, our fifth bait and, uh, you know, one of my one of my go to techniques, if, if you've followed me on, on social media uh, over the years, you've heard me talk about lipless crankbaits a lot of times. And so one of the baits we put in there obviously had to be a lipless crankbait. And that was from Raw Outdoors. And we had them create a unique color just for us. It's this dark and light little shad pattern right here. Um, 
it, dark can be good in uh, actually low light conditions, darker colors. It sounds uh, contradictory to, to yourself, to itself, but darker colors work better in darker conditions because they can see the silhouette better. Um, but then you've got this light little belly. So this is going to work in dingy water and clear water, a great little bait. Once again, can fish all the different water columns. So as I cast this little bait out, if I have a slow retrieve, I can keep that bait down low. If I speed it up, that bait will, will swim higher up in the water column. Now, um, what I really like to do is I'll cast the bait out and I actually let it sink all the way to the bottom and I'll hop it like a little jig and this little bait vibrates up and falls back down, vibrates up and falls back down. And it is so much fun when you get hit on this bait because when you cast and you lift up, you feel that vibration and then you stop reeling and you let that bait sink back down. That's where you get bit is not on the, uh, on the shimmy up, but it's actually on the fall and you'll see your line just go thud. And it's the, it's, I'm addicted to that feeling. It's, it's an effective, effective technique that you can fish these different water columns and you can fish it fast, or you can really slow down in, in areas where you know there's fish and really work those areas thoroughly. And, this is a technique that, guys, this is, a, this is something you really need to listen to. I don't care what baits you're using. When conditions are tough and we go, oh, man, the fishing's really hard right now, the majority, the absolute 96, 97% of anglers downsize. They fish uh, smaller baits and they fish them a lot slower. Okay, now that's very effective. That is, that is a great adjustment to make. But when everybody in the lake makes the same adjustment, that can also condition the fish. The fish are going to see that. And you can change it up a little bit by coming in with a reaction bait, and just fishing it a little bit differently. Instead of just casting and reeling, you let that bait sink all the way to the bottom and you just give it tiny little hops. And I'm talking, you're just trying to jump this bait six inches off the bottom. So it's going six inches, six inches, six inches. A fish will hear that coming, rattling. And finally, when it gets to it, and you'll see on how these fish hit it too. They don't just engulf it. They nip at it. It's pissed them off all the way over here. And it's finally made its way to them. They just go, and they snap at it. And you end up just barely getting them on the, the, uh, the back hook or just they're barely hooked. But it is extremely effective. It will happen over and over again where guys are like, yeah, I caught two fish. The bite was really, really tough. You can catch 15 to 20 fish and go, hey, man, I was actually getting them. I uh, And I was getting them on a lipless. And they figure you were just throwing, casting that the bite was wide open for you, and it wasn't. You slowed down. So it, that whole mentality of doing something, adjusting, but don't adjust to the same thing everyone is doing. Make adjustments that that can still get you bit and still present the fish something they aren't seeing. Hopefully that makes a little bit of sense, guys. Um, okay. Now, I've been talking about Lucky Extras. We showed you the skirts. The other Lucky Extra that we put in there, uh, because when you go out fishing, you need fishing line, right? So we now have a Lucky Extras fishing line. We had 12-pound monofilament in this. Now, the reason I like mono is, uh, well, first of all, 12-pound is a good uh, size line for you to fish all of your hard baits that were in the box. So you can fish the spinner bait, the lipless, and that's what I'm going to be using tomorrow is that 12-pound uh, on all, all these baits, but then a top water bait. Now, a lot of times I prefer throwing braided line for my top water because braided line floats. Um, and it, it's, it, it's a great line to throw. However, mono also floats. So if you don't have braid mono is the next best choice. And that's, what's going to be perfect for you guys throwing this bait as well is that, um, lucky extra line. So Last thing we have in the box here, guys, we also include a magazine that's got some great articles. Uh, my buddy, Jesse Schultz, and his wife actually put together this magazine, and we go over the articles in here and really put a lot of work into this. So this also helps you guys stay educated, gives you some stuff to think about. Um, and uh, I, I know that you guys really liked it, that got it in the box. Uh, and if you guys are thinking about subscribing, that's a little taste of what you get uh, month to month. Um, anyway, uh, that's what I have for Back to the Basics. Rachel, before we keep moving down, let's uh, take a couple more questions. Okay, Will um, said that he prefers Texas rig on a 10-inch worm. Um, okay, so... 
that's a great a 10 inch worm. When you get on a 10 inch worm bite, you are, you're doing some things. A lot of guys don't like throwing worms that big. If you're on a bite, that's a great tool to be using. Um, however, uh, for me, that's a, that is a springtime when the fish are really moving up, when the bite is on type bait. And then in the summer, in the dog days of summer, that big worm is excels when they're kind of lethargic. They're not looking to chase a lot of stuff. When they see a big presentation moving slow, that's when the bass are going to eat that. Um, but day in and day out, you want to have this hog. This is going to catch you more fish. I will be able to catch, I'll be able to outfish you uh, 365 days with this hog over your worm. Um, go with the worm first in your ideal conditions because that's a great bait to be throwing. But have this, if that's not working, quickly go back to this. What else, Rachel? Okay, Will has uh, Will is really laying in the questions, and I like it. And Will, make sure you tune in um, Saturday morning, nine uh, a.m. Pacific Standard Time, twelve uh, Eastern. And uh, he asked spinnerbait, what kind of trailer? Uh, I really like to change it up a lot. In clear water, I'll use a little bit smaller trailer. I, I look a little bit smaller and very realistic profile. Uh, in dingier water, or if there's big bait fish in a uh, particular body of water. I'll use like bigger little swim baits. Um, in the video that we were showing, I'm using real thin. Uh, it's basically, I think it's a zoom trailer and it's just basically two little uh, phalanges hanging off the back just to give it a little bit more bulk, just to give it a little bit more color. Um, when in doubt, just throw something real small that hangs off the back of there. If you really understand what you're trying to mimic, you've seen some bait fish that are certain color, then you can throw uh, something, a trailer on the back of that that matches the color in that uh, body of water. Good question, Will. Rolando, you were given a subscription for Christmas. Uh, glad to have you on board, um, but you want to catch striped bass. Okay, so a lot of these, this is specially designed for black bass, which is largemouth, smallmouth, spotted bass. But um, spotted bass are prolific eaters as well. They love throwing, uh, they love hitting reaction baits. So this would be my number one choice, throwing this little lipless crankbait by Raw Outdoors. Uh, if you see stripers busting, I don't normally fish for striper, but I will never not throw a cast to fish that are feeding. And so when I'm out on a lake and I see all of a sudden striper boiling, I pick up whatever I have, whatever top water I have and throw it out there. So this little popper would be an excellent choice um, to throw out for those, uh, for those big striper. And if they're real big striper, make sure you put on bigger, stouter hooks. If you hook into a 15, 20 pound striper, they're going to bend out these hooks. So either have your drag really loosened up or have some beefier uh, hooks on there. Good question. Stephen, Stephen, uh, first of all, I, we appreciate you guys, are you tuning into all our live um, stuff? Uh, we, we love our Lucky Tackle Box family. I know we have a, a good community that really supports us. What is my go-to bait? Um, my go-to bait is a lipless crankbait. This is something that uh, if I get onto a, especially if I get onto a body of water I've never fished or even a body of water I haven't fished in a while, um, I, I do what I call a hot lap. And this is fishing from the shore, fishing from the boat. I want to cover water. I want to check out that lake, see what it's all about. So I'm going to pick up that lipless crankbait and I'm not completely trying to catch fish. I'm trying to cover water and see as much uh, of that lake as I possibly can. And, and I'll jump around with this little lipless. I can be casting. I can be looking a different way, reeling. I can be working at different ways. I can be slowing down in areas and really trying to figure out if there's grass down there. If there's, if there is fish biting, um, and if once I've gotten a hot lap, I have a very good idea of what's working. I, I'll, I've usually tuned into something by then. So lipless crankbait is a great bait to be using for that. Oh, this is a good question uh, from Brian um, about what uh, fluorocarbon, oh, Ryan, um, 
well, what fluorocarbon I'd want to use with the wacky rig. And uh, he says that he uses a braid to fluorocarbon. Um, uh, guys, so, and I actually do this a lot as well. I will spool up my uh, rod with um, 20 pound braid, which is the same as like six pound diameter. So, so you can use it on your spinning rod, but it's going to give you the, the equivalent of 20 pound line. And this is great for fishing around structure cover and stuff. But the other thing this lets you do is use heavier line um, with a spinning reel. A lot of times, if you go above 10, even 12 pound line, depending on what you're using, it will start over spooling. It can't uh, hold that type of line because that line has too much memory and will spool off there. So, so you either have to go to a bait caster or you use braided line and you tie a leader. So you just tie six to 12 feet of line at the end of that braid that uh, is your main line. And so that being said, you want to throw the fluorocarbon according to the uh, water clarity and the structure you're fishing around. Uh, as a general rule, I like about 12 pound fluorocarbon. If I'm fishing in these clear lakes in uh, Northern California or down in Arizona where it's crystal clear, um, sometimes I'm not even gonna throw braid or I'm gonna throw a real long leader and that'll be any, that'll usually about six pound braid. So great question. Tomorrow, I'll be using 12 pound. I mean, Saturday. <clears throat> but anyway, guys, that's all we've got. Make sure you tune back in. Well, first of all, hit the thumbs up if you've enjoyed this. If you're on Facebook, hit a like. Make sure you're following us. If you're on YouTube, and if you're not on YouTube, make sure you get on YouTube. Subscribe to our channel. We have more content than anyone else has right now. Hit that thumbs up. Hit the subscribe button and tune back in at 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. We're on Saturday where I'm going to be out on the water fishing. You guys are going to get to fish along with me. It's going to be like you're getting a day of fishing with your boy Trav. We're going to be joking around. We're going to be sassing each other having a good time as old buddies or we will be, become old buddies anyway guys that does it i'm travis moran and i promise you no one works harder to help you fish better i'll catch you out in the water